Now to Haiti, where the government has declared a state of emergency as violence escalates. Armed gangs demanding the Prime Minister's resignation have attacked two prisons, allowing thousands of inmates to escape and leaving dozens dead and wounded. Violence has reached unprecedented levels since the assassination of President uh, Jovenel Moisi at his home in 2021. It's estimated that gangs now control as much as 80% of the capital, Port-au-Prince. Our Prime Minister Ariel Henry travelled out of the country last week to try and drum up support for a multinational peace mission to bring this gang violence under control. Armed gangs have set up roadblocks in many parts of the capital, Port-au-Prince, following an explosion of violence. Gunfire was reported in several neighbourhoods. People drive and walk by bodies lying in the streets, some with their hands tied behind their backs. Police officers are among the dead, overwhelmed by coordinated attacks orchestrated by a former officer turned gang leader nicknamed Barbecue, who says he won't stop until Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry is gone. We ask the Haitian National Police and the military to take responsibility and arrest Ariel Henry. Once again, we're not against the people. The armed groups are not your enemy. Arrest Ariel Henry for the country's liberation. These weapons that we have are not to hurt our brothers, who come from the same milieu as we do. The poor, they trust us. These weapons are a symbol of freedom. With these weapons, we will liberate the country. It's believed more than 3,500 prisoners fled into the general population when the gunmen stormed two prisons, Haiti's main penitentiary in the capital and another in nearby Croix des Bouquets. Some inmates decided to stay in their cells, afraid of being caught in the crossfire. Others too old or disabled to flee. Prime Minister Henri was away drumming up support for a multinational military mission to Haiti. Under a political deal, he was due to stand down last month, but planned elections were never held okay. and he remains in power. Violence has reached unprecedented levels since the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse at his home in 2021. It's estimated gangs now control as much as 80 percent of the capital. Let's look at this with Robert Fatton, Jr. He's a Julia A. Cooper Professor of Government and Foreign Affairs in the Department of Politics at the University of Virginia. His many publications include Haiti's Predatory Republic, The Unending Transition to Democracy, and Haiti Trapped in the Outer Periphery. Uh, welcome to DW, Professor. Um, Haiti now has a 72-hour state of emergency, but the government doesn't seem to be in control. Yeah, the government hasn't been in control for a while, but the situation, has, I think, has deteriorated signif significantly over the past 48 hours. There is a situation of a total vacuum of institutional power. The prime minister, as you said, is out of the country, and it's for it's getting very difficult for him to get back to Paul Press because the airport itself is closed, and the situation on the ground is extremely violent and the gangs uh, have uh, really accentuated their offensive against the current regime of Ariel Henry. And what is really worrisome is that most of the gangs, which tended to be divided, have united for the first time and are waging a campaign that is rather sophisticated, even using drone against key institutions of the country and key strategic infrastructure in the country. So okay. we are virtually on the verge of a collapse. So Ariel Henry, the prime minister in Kenya to discuss uh, a Kenya-led multinational security force uh, coming into Haiti. So many questions this throws up. The, the biggest one, of course, uh, why isn't the Haitian army up to the task? Well, the Haitian army was disbanded under for, former President Aristide, and it is trying to reconstitute itself. And actually, today there was news that that reconstituted army, which is extremely weak, 
and very poorly armed, is trying to get to the national airport in Port-au-Prince in order to prevent the collapse of that major infrastructure in the country. So it's difficult to tell whether the army can in fact do anything about the violence of the gangs. The police was the main coercive force of the government, but the police itself is extremely weak. It has been besieged by lack of weapons and also by a significant amount of corruption, and it's a small police given the population of the country. So most of the institutions that could keep things together are no longer in existence in Haiti, or they are on virtual uh, a state of uh, collapse. Okay. So, uh, and the, one of the leaders, one of the main leaders of this, this, this violence is actually a former police officer, this guy that's become known as, as Barbecue. And as you were saying, so uh, Haiti's armed groups have now united to, to say the prime minister must go. Should we look at this through the lens of politically motivated violence, therefore, or is this just criminal? It is both, actually. It is criminal because the gangs have really done some really awful criminal things, killing people, ransoming people, kidnapping people, and also forcing a significant number of Haitians living in the poor areas of Port-au-Prince to exit uh, their local uh, site of, uh, of inhabitants. It's something like 300,000 uh, Haitians who have been marginalized and are now actually internal migrant, displaced migrant in Port-au-Prince itself. But there's a political reason for that, and the political reason is that the population at large, even the population that does not at all support the gangs, well, that population is, to put it crudely, fed up with the current situation and with the current regime. The current regime has been promising elections, a new constitution, order for the past two years, and it has absolutely failed to deliver on those promises. So there is a political sentiment among the vast majority of Haiti that the situation is no longer tenable. And most people in Haiti would like to see that regime, the current government, gone. Okay, so following on from that then, as far as you're aware, is there a plan for what happens after, I should say if I suppose, but after peace is restored? Because the country was desperately poor and failing even before all this happened. Well, there is no clear plan. There is the talk about the international mission led by Kenya, but the post-violent uh, 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 stage, as it were, is not clear. It's very difficult for me to see how you can have elections given the current conditions in Haiti. So ultimately, I believe that if you want to extricate the country from that current uh, catastrophe, you need to have a transitional government of national unity. But the problem is that the different factions of the Haitian political class cannot agree on anything. And unless there is agreement, uh, you can't have a transitional government. And the other question, obviously, is what do you do with the gangs, even if you reestablish a modicum of security? Are the gangs going to be marginalized, sent to jail, or are you going to have to reincorporate them into the moral community of the nation? That's a huge question, and there is no good answer. Because the conditions of poverty, yeah, the conditions of poverty are such that they nurture the creation of gangs. You have a vast population of young men who have no future at all, no economic stake in anything. So, th so therefore, they've moved to that desperate situation of becoming gang members. Right. So given that it is questionable whether the, P the prime minister can or will return, and indeed whether this, this, this military um, uh, mission uh, led by Kenya uh, can even be successful, how do you think this latest uh, crisis will be resolved? I think eventually there will be some kind of intervention, international intervention, unless they accept a complete uh, collapse and chaos in the country, which I think the international community will not tolerate. Uh, and this is especially the case, given that in the United States, it's an electoral year, 
and President Biden has so many different crises that he probably doesn't want to have another one in his, as they put it in the United States, in his backyard. And that might be linked to the problem of immigration. Now, in order to have a solution, you need to get the Haitian political class to get, uh, together. If you don't have an agreement among the Haitian key actors, then it's difficult to see what can be done. And hopefully, this crisis and this latest event will compel Haitians to come to an agreement and have some sort of uh, national transitional government of unity. Okay. Uh, Professor Robert Fatton, Jr. from the University of Virginia, thank you so much for uh, guiding us so clearly through that. Thank you so much.